Rain Bravo 1553 Zulu with 310 at 9. Visibility 5, white rain, mist. Sky conditions 1,800 scattered, 2,400 broken. 3,700 overcast, temperature 11.2.8, altimeter 2904. Alaska is a special place to me. I've had great success hunting throughout the state, taking doll sheep, moose, caribou, brown bear, grizzly, and wolf. However, there is one animal that has eluded me, the mountain goat. 15 years ago, I started my quest to hunt Kodiak Island for a mountain goat. On my first goat hunt, the weather got me. I had to bail off the top of the mountain after a freak early season snowstorm dumped 24 inches of wet snow on us overnight. We were forced to evacuate the mountain and seek safer ground. It turned out to be more of a survival mission than a goat hunt. My second trip, I quit halfway up the mountain because it was 10 years older and didn't train for the physical challenge to hike up into the high alpine where the goats live. This year, when I drew the coveted mountain goat permit for the third time, I asked my guide Brian Peterson what I needed to do to train for the hunt. He said, I'll be honest with you, you need to lose 50 pounds and hike a thousand miles before your hunt if you want that goat. That's exactly what I did. I started hiking twice a day, every day until the hunt. I logged 1,049 miles and climbed over 175,000 vertical feet. Hunting Alaska's mountain game is a young man's game. I started my quest for a mountain goat at 40 years old. I'm now 55. I promised myself on this trip I would never quit. Failure wasn't an option. This would be my last chance. I said I was gonna hike this hill every day whether it was zero degrees or 100 degrees, whether it was raining or snowing or windy. And it looks like today I'm getting the uh, snow. It's 12 degrees and the winds are gusting to 38 miles an hour and we got about six inches of snow on the ground. But I made a commitment to do this every day, even in six inches of snow like today. So six miles down today and 1,400 vertical feet of elevation climbed. Every day it's getting easier, except maybe for today. It's a tough one today. 200 miles. 400 miles. Mile 600, and it's a hot one. 96 degrees out. 800 miles. Man, it's a hot one today. 104 degrees officially at the National Weather Service. Nine more miles of hiking up and down these hills. But it's a hot one. Two more weeks until the goat hunt. But mile 962 is a hot one. 1,000 miles. I told myself when I drew the goat permit that I was gonna hike 1,000 miles to train for the hunt. And today makes 1,000 miles. Three days ago, it was 104 degrees. It was the hottest day of the summer. Now today, we get the earliest recorded snowfall in Rapid City, 1.6 inches of snow on September 8th. It's been a crazy summer.
Well, I made it down to Brian's Lodge at Ugak Bay and thought I'd fire my rifle for a confirming shot. And it is looking pretty good. Pretty good. So now we're going to hike up the, the goat hill. See if we can get to the top of the mountain in a couple of days. Off we go. A short 15 minute boat ride would get us to the base of the mountain where we would put on our packs and say goodbye to Brian and start the brutal climb to the top. Mountain goat hunting is a constant mental and physical battle. As you push through the thick alders, salmonberry brush, and devil's club, you climb higher and higher to reach the alpine. Your body is screaming at you to turn around now, yet your self-discipline says, never give up. You fight for every step of elevation and cross numerous waterfalls to reach the sheer cliffs and shale slides where the mountain goats thrive. Your clothes are completely soaked with sweat and you are beyond exhausted. Only six more hours of climbing to get to the goat country. Yesterday we got dropped in with a Cessna 206 at uh, Brian's Lodge, which is way down there uh, across from that first bay that you see. That first bay is Hidden Basin. Above that's Brian's Lodge. Then we took a skiff all the way over to here and then uh, put our packs on and climbed all through this alder jungle all the way up here into the Alpine. Took us a uh, better part of two days to get up into this Alpine, but right now we're at about uh, 2,000 feet and uh, the weather is looking good for the next few days and we have found some goats, but right now I'm trying to dry out some of our clothes from the two-day hike in. It's been kind of brutal. But Hunter's up here, my guide, and uh, he had his spot and scope out and was looking at some goats that are over in this basin over here. Well, what'd you see up there? Well, I definitely see a lot of goats up there. I think there's over 10. We have a, some nannies and kids close to us and one that I, one separate one that might be a nanny just considering where it's at, but seems to be in that, uh, before that, that far ridge there, there's one lone uh, goat. It seems like his bases are pretty heavy and close together and awesome. whatnot. And then there's two over here and uh, on that one point, eh, they're, I can't really tell, but they kind of look nanny-like. And then there's one in the next bowl in the farthest ridge that looks like a pretty nice goat. Well, it's about uh, four o'clock on uh, the second day of our hunt, setting up our camp here. And right above it, we found some goats that we think might be in striking distance tomorrow. So we're gonna hold up here pitch our tents and uh, operate out of here for a day or two and see if we can't get one of these goats that's over there in that bowl. I've got these really nice Hilleberg one-person tents and they are awesome. Really good. Looks like we might have a little clouds rolling in but not too bad. Our weather's actually been really good uh, after we were done with the big rains which delayed us getting in for one day. And there's Hunter setting up his tent. Well, we made it up to this steep alpine stuff. We came up through uh, maybe 1,200 feet of uh, alders and salmonberry brush and, and uh, devil's club. But we, we pushed through hard for two days and we made it up here into this alpine stuff. And in these steep cliffs, we found some goats. And uh, I think we've got a plan to try and go Put it together on these goats tomorrow we're still early in the hunt got a lot of time but we made it up into here so i'm feeling pretty good about our odds well we're gonna have a little dinner tonight get the jet boil going and we got some freeze dried here we have uh, dark chocolate chili or chicken with rice or mom's spaghetti with beef and marinara sauce man what's it gonna be tonight I think I might have the chicken with rice. These are really good. Uh, they're made right in Anchorage. 
They're called Heather's Choice. They are really good, and I've had Mountain House, and I've had these Heather's Choice, and I really like the Heather's Choice. I think they're they're really good. Do you like them, Hunter? Yeah, they're pretty awesome. Good calories and everything. Good energy. What'd you have last night? I had the spaghetti. You had the which spaghetti. Is pretty okay. Pretty bomb. They're good. Good yeah, stuff. They get the job done. I'm gonna really sweat over this cooking job. <laughs> So freeze dry as it is tonight, and I'm looking forward to it. We had a big day of hiking. Oh, that's gonna be good. Oh, yeah. It's gonna be good. Boom. Dinner on a ledge above a creek in the mountain goat country on Kodiak Island. Yeah. We're perched on a on a 2000 foot drop off here is where we're at. Can't see too much, but right over the top rough. there it goes down about 1900 feet I guess we said. Yeah. So, yeah, quite the deal. Good place to have dinner. As I crawled into my sleeping bag, I thought to myself, this is every hunter's dream. Falling asleep on the top of a mountain in Alaska with a mature billy within striking distance. I hoped as the early morning sunlight illuminated the steep shale slide, he would still be there. Well, we came from way over there, and we're headed over this way across this hillside, and the goat should be right over the top there. So we'll see. around the next corner. He might be about 500 yards away, but we're just kind of taking a break right here. And we're gonna go around the corner, see if he might still be there. Maybe we can put it together on him. This has been 15 years in the works, three trips, 30 days invested, and we just killed him 225 yards away, Kodiak Island, Wild Creek. What a thrill. He's a nine inch belly, super beautiful hide. I couldn't be more thrilled. This is just a wonderful experience. Thanks to Brian Peterson, master guide, and my guide on this trip, Hunter, for uh, leading me to this goat. We made a beautiful stock, shot him at about 225 yards with my in rut rifle shooting 200 grain uh, Hornaday bullets. And he didn't take but three steps and I got him. So what a wonderful experience. We came down here this morning and I woke up and I went to check our goat meat and there were plastic bags strewn all over. I kind of thought a bear had got into it but fortunately we came over the hill and there was a black fox. He would drug one of our, our quarters of meat over the hill and he was eating on it so he ain't eating on it anymore. Let's go check him out. Drug it clear down here. Drug this quarter of meat all the way down here. So he isn't going to do that anymore. Well, we're on our final pack out this morning from my successful mountain goat hunt.
woke up this morning and there was a fox eating on on our goat meat better a fox than a bear i guess but we're gonna pan down to here pack down to there and uh maybe get uh we're probably 500 feet above the uh, alder line then we got a brutal pack through the alders down to wild creek and then once we hit wild creek we've got a three mile hike to to hidden base into the salt water where brian's going to pick us up so what a successful hunt uh, really Really, truly amazed that we were able to pull it off and, and get such a beautiful mountain goat. Beautiful scenery, beautiful day. So, Well, we just made it 1,800 feet down that alder jungle. It's the toughest 1,800 feet you could ever imagine. Devil's Club and alder, salmonberry brush, and straight sheer face slopes. But we made it through that, that tough stuff. We're now down to Wild Creek. We got three miles down to Wild Creek to the mouth of Hidden Basin, and that's where Brian's going to pick us up with the boat. When backpack hunting in the mountains, the ultimate goal is to go in light and come out heavy. With all the gear, meat, and life-size goat hide, we were definitely coming out heavy. We weighed our packs when we made it back to the lodge. My pack weighed 74 pounds, and Hunter's weighed 121. The beauty of Alaska is it's either a place where you can lose yourself or find yourself. Out of all the places I've hunted, nothing comes close to the beauty and stunning landscapes of Kodiak. As the float plane lifts off and carries me back to civilization, I cannot help but ponder what my next adventure will be. There is a reason I keep coming back. It's more than the giant 10-foot brown bears, the majestic mountain goats, and the soaring bald eagles flying overhead. It's the untouched wilderness and the thought of what's over the next mountain that keeps me coming back.